Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, we're two Americans renovating a chateau in northern France on 40 acres. We're currently fixing up one of the cottages on the property to house those guests who arrive and are considered riffraff. How's it going, you might ask? Well, not as quickly as we'd like. We have a couple of kids and unfortunately we need to feed and occasionally speak to them. Lately we've been pulled in many directions. Last week felt like a blur. Good thing I've been filming, otherwise I might not have remembered what occurred. I've been searching for a stove for our cottage for a couple of months now. I wanted something authentically French and found one online. We were taking a chance since the owner had no idea if it even worked. So off we went. Lincoln's bringing some pallets just to make sure. So we basically have enough to move an entire house or get, yeah. rid, get rid of a body too, <laughs> possibly. If there's something we need that we don't have, there's probably a store. A store. There, like a really but it's or Sunday. No, it's Saturday. Oh, today's Saturday. So we are here bright and early to pick up our rental van. And I'm hoping it all goes smoothly. You think we need those? Well, we have room for them, so we might as well take them. <laughs> so we're taking back roads today, not because we want to, but because the GPS has told us to, to do this because it had been the last week or so. Yeah, uh, days, the farmers have been protesting. Farmers across France and Europe have been protesting due to low wages and increase in fuel prices for equipment. They take their tractors on the highways to slow traffic. France is the EU's biggest agricultural producer with thousands of independent producers of wine, meat, and dairy. Since last year, they've been turning roadsides upside down to protest what they argue are nonsensical agricultural policies. We're seeing little towns that we've never been through because we always drive on the highway. So, I'm not sure how much this is going to add to our trip. It says we're four hours and 19 minutes away, so we've been on the road for over an hour. Okay, it's taking us on the highway. I hope nothing bad is going to happen. <laughs> I can see if you can see something. Well, I can see something ahead on the other side, but I don't know. If, is that an accident or are the farmers? No. So there, there's there's no traffic on the, on the other side of the highway because they've shut it down. So we're finally back on. It wasn't, wasn't too bad. It wasn't much of a detour, but we could encounter this throughout our journey.
On our way to look at the stove, we discussed if we might be robbed or possibly murdered and chopped up into little pieces, but quickly realized that might just be the paranoid American in us. In reality, worst case scenario, the stove was a dud and we wasted a day. After traveling through France this week, it got me thinking of my ancestors who probably lived in this exact region. This week, I'm thrilled to have partnered with MyHeritage, the leading global service for DNA testing and family history research. It's fun and incredibly easy to build your family tree. As long as you know the names of your parents and grandparents, MyHeritage does the rest. Since I now live in France, I was curious about my French heritage on my mother's father's side. I can search in one language and my heritage's global name translation technology will even find records for me in other languages. All I had were a few names written down and my heritage added discovery links and I was able to find ancestors in Scotland and Ireland I didn't know I even had. I've made so many new and interesting discoveries since using my heritage. One of my great, great, great uncles is the composer of the Canadian National Anthem. How cool is that? That's a fun fact I didn't know and I can't wait to share the results with my mother. My Heritage gives you access to 19 billion easily searchable historical records right at your fingertips. And with the My Heritage Advanced Technologies, my kids and I had a really fun time uploading, repairing, colorizing, and animating photos of relatives they were never able to meet. My Heritage makes it so simple to tag, label, and organize the photos, giving my kids and future generations an opportunity to learn about their family history. So sign up for a 14-day free trial and enjoy all of the amazing features MyHeritage has to offer. If you decide to continue your subscription, you'll receive a 50% discount. So the million dollar question is how do we remove it <laughs> from the van and get it down this muddy embankment um, we have a friend coming over to help us we're going to store it in one of the barns for now yeah all right well i'm thinking we should put it in the house for now well that was my idea <laughs> <laughs> we were originally going to put it in the outbuilding and i'm a little concerned that it might be too damp in there because other metal things have gotten kind of rusty yeah, yeah so i think if we just put it in the central hallway we can get it cleaned up yeah but how are we going to move it what's your plan here your game plan well i'm thinking if my driving skills are up to snuff <laughs> i can back the van up to the steps in the front uh, of the house yeah and then we can use the ramps and just okay. go straight across behold the coveted la cornu chateau series stove each one is numbered and handmade to order we think this one dates back to the late 1980s, and we paid 1,500 euros for it. The deal of a century. I guess the million dollar question is, does it work? We had no idea going into this if it worked. So we were lucky enough to discover it, it does work. Yeah. So <laughs> we, were, we were able to plug it in and yeah. uh, make sure that, that the oven, all of the elements in the oven, because there's three on top and three on the bottom, they all warm up. The ignition, the sparkers for, for the cooktop work. Yeah, so um, I think we got a good deal. I saw somebody trying to sell one of these on eBay for $20,000. I mean, good that's luck to of, them. That's a lot of money. I did get in touch with La Cornu. I sent them an email and they have a local distributor, I think, um, in Wren. Mm -hmm. And I got a price list so if we wanted to buy one of these brand new right now, it would run us about 35,000 euros. Yeah. So I think we found a really good bargain and <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> so this will be going into our cottage and it's, it's, it's a beast. These things are handmade and built to last. La Cornu does have another line called the Cornu Fay, right? Right, yeah, Cornu Fay. And those, interestingly enough, are made by Aga. They're sort of a lower, Price range, La Cornu, right. if you want it's something that's... It's closer to like 10,000 rather than Yeah, I think they run between 9 and 12,000 euros. So if you're, if you're looking for that bargain. Yeah. <laughs> I had a client who had two very large uh, La Cornu chateaus. And I was 
really nice to cook on. So I was scouring Le Bon Croix, which is the equivalent of Craigslist here in, mm -hmm. in France. I found a couple of them and inquired. We, I did make an offer on one which wasn't in as good condition and it was a much older model. This, this listing had been sitting for over a year. So mm -hmm. I didn't realize that until after I got in touch with the woman and I wasn't expecting a response, but she said it's still available. So we were, we were quite skeptical. You know, we're like, well, why didn't this thing sell? Um, because there are people who put adverts on actually asking, like, mm -hmm. I'm looking for one. Yes. And I guess people didn't want to make the trip because they had no idea if this thing worked. So, you right. know, we took a big chance driving. They said they didn't know how to use it. They didn't, yeah, they didn't they, have gas. They didn't have gas in their house and it didn't have a plug on it at the time. Yeah. So they were just... Okay, let's just sell it. But they, they were lovely, lovely people, and she had eight cats, so I felt sort so of that's, a... That's good. <laughs> yeah. This is exciting for me. Maybe we'll try to find one for the Chateau Kitchen also, big, but that's... Maybe a bigger one. That would be a larger one. The big giant ones run up to brand new, a couple hundred thousand, right. which is that, that's crazy. Absurd. So obviously this stove needs a good clean. This is um, cast iron, so we need to be careful how we clean this. So this stove comes with two regular burners and then this is called a French top. Um, in the restaurants, we used to call this a flat top. And these are great to cook on because the heat comes from here and then it sort of dissipates out and then you can you know, move a pot over and have it simmer. You can tell this, this side has barely been used. I mean, look at this, this is, this is brass. This is all solid brass. And obviously these two burners have been cooked on. That's the same piece. Yeah, it's the same piece. So it just, we need to, we do need to clean it up. You had checked on I, I online for parts. I found one online and it was, it was La Cornu. It was in the U.S. and it was 800 something dollars. For, for that for particular piece. piece. Yeah. So thankfully, um, we don't need any pieces right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is all solid brass. This is nickel. It's got a cool oven. And then... The vaulted oven, that's their yeah, claim that's, to that's fame. That's their thing, I don't know. Well, it's supposed to be natural convection. You got a little door over here with your controls. In it's and got a drawer. drawer. Yeah, so it just needs a good, good clean and... I'm ready to cook. We have enough chairs. Yeah. Not all of them yet. So I think this is going to take us more than a day. We, we got a late start. Next thing to remove are these mattresses. We found another sink. This is a nice old sink. Um, it's really heavy. I don't think it's cracked. 
similar to the one we have in our kitchen, but much larger. So we'll definitely use this somewhere. Maybe when we renovate the barn. That's my next project. So we need to get these out of here and to the dump. I feel like we didn't make any progress today. Yeah. You think we did? Yes. Now we have to bring all the chairs back in. <laughs> this is like a two day job, I think, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Feels like spring though. Spring? It does. Doesn't it feel like spring? It does, kind of, but it's still It even looks like spring. Daffodils are coming up amongst the weeds. Snowdrops are up. It's amazing how just in the last few days you wake up in the morning and you hear the birds. It's such a nice sound. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have something to say, leave us a comment.